today on Destination Polaris. We're ready to rock Moab. We call it rubbernecking because your neck's gonna hurt so bad from looking from side to side because the beauty is just unbelievable. Bring on Hell's Revenge. Bring on the seven mile rim. Bring it all on, because we're ready to ride. Destination Polaris starts right now. Welcome to the show. We are in Moab, Utah, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. We're gonna ride Seven Mile Rim. We're gonna check out some arches, and it all begins right here at Hell's Revenge. H-E double hockey stick. It's where school really begins, right there at Hell's Revenge. I love Hell's Revenge. It's one of my favorite places. Hell's Revenge is like a staple. Like, I take everybody there. It's actually uh, the most sought off off road trail in the United States. Okay, I get it. Everyone loves Hell's Revenge. And why not? You got places like Devil's Backbone and Hot Tubs. What's not to like? Hell's Revenge is located right in the town of Moab. Moab is roughly four hours south of Salt Lake City. It's not a stretch to call this place the outdoor capital of the U.S. We're the off-road capital of the world, mountain biking capital of the world, river running capital of the world. People from all over the world come out here to visit Moab. We'll get to tons of riding in just a second, but I gotta get something out of the way first. If you go to Moab, even if you don't plan to ride, there's one place you have to go. Above anything else, when you come to Moab, you show them the direction to Arches National Park. And a lot of those people go in there and they come back and they say, you weren't kidding, that was the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. Right now we're driving on the entrance to Arches National Park. These are all man-made arches in here. There's nothing natural at all. They did a great job. It's just one of those places that has it all. Don't skip out on Delicate Arch. Make the hike and I promise, promise, promise you won't be disappointed. You cannot find a place in my book any prettier than what we're in. Sorry, nothing. Nope, not my shoe. Look at this, eat this cell phone. It's Sprint, he likes Verizon. Now that we've got that super cool, boring arch out of the way, let's go find a place to ride. Because one thing about Moab is we have over 3,000 miles of off-road trails. Oh boy, that's a lot. Good thing we have Kent Green along for the ride. He's a good old-fashioned Moab cowboy who happens to be a fantastic local guy. I've been here in southeastern Utah for 55 years. Most of my life's been here in Moab. I don't go anywhere without my cowboy hat. So Kent, tell me where we're uh, going today. What's our plan? What we're gonna do today was we're gonna go out to a place called Seven Mile Rim. And we're gonna connect into some trails out there also called Monitor Merrimack, Bartlett Wash, Hidden Wash. It's just a fantastic area out there. It's a great place to ride. A lot of diversity in the terrain that we have out here in Moab. You're gonna be impressed with it. Do we have to bring this guy? We gotta bring Chris. He's the man. Chris is the mad scientist behind Marshall Motor. I'm Chris Burke. We're known for more of the wild. This is Brutus, this is our shop rig, so we went a little bit over the top with it. You know, out there, high end, 
vehicles. I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I want to kind of put our twist on it or do something just completely different anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You either really like what we do or you don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine with that. We met Chris a few years ago, and man, did he blow us away. We've teamed up on a lot of cool projects. I'm gonna bend a pipe for that to make a grab handle. And then we started doing the Project X's together. I'm Chris Burke with Marshall Motor Art, and this is Project X. Play buggy out of a Polaris Ranger. We turbocharged it. We put my 5.5 cage kit on it, some long travel suspension. Then we did Project Spider Monkey. Today we're gonna to start our build on the world's biggest, baddest six by six, which is crazy over the top. Over a hundred grand in this thing. Six by six with a trailer with independent suspension and air ride and pop-up tent. It even comes with its own ladder. Chris brought one of his little toys for this trip. Recently we did the uh, very first Razor XP4900. We did our cage with going doors, turbo kit, long travel. So basically it's a stock machine that we added our cage, our radius roof line cage, and our going doors here. So our going doors have really taken off. We're sending them all over the world. Dubai, Indonesia, I've got some in Russia. Yeah, they look cool. I mean, when you can pull up and you're like back to the future, your door comes up, it definitely gets attention. And just to keep everyone in line, Kent brought along his daughter. Back over here, Metal Masher. One thing about it is that he knows Moab inside and out. All righty, yeah, anytime. You could stick him, blindfold him, you know, put him in a helicopter and stick him anywhere in Moab and he would know exactly where he was. And then you follow that ridge out there, it's called the porcupine. What are you doing out here? Out here to play and have some fun, get out of the shop for a little while. You gotta have that H2O. Out here, you gotta drink at least a gallon of water a day. If you don't, you'll be hurting. A lot of people out here get in trouble not drinking enough water because our heat's so dry out here. You have to have water out here to survive. Go time. It's a ridiculously nice day. That's where we're riding. How could you not be excited? All right, we're just getting started on our Moab adventure. Stick around. There's much more ahead. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is brought to you by ITP, the world's number one aftermarket ATV and UTV tire and wheel source. And by Progressive Insurance. Think easier, think progressive. Welcome back to Destination Polaris. We are in Moab, Utah, where there are so many places to ride, it's hard to choose. We kick things off at a place called Seven Mile Rim. Seven Mile Rim is a very popular trail because people are able to come out that are not very experienced, but yet be able to challenge themselves, have the confidence on doing what they're here for. We call it rubbernecking because your neck's gonna hurt so bad from looking from side to side because the beauty is just unbelievable. We've got local guide Kent Green and Chris Burke from Marshall Motor Art along for the ride. We're a business called Moab Cowboy Off-Road. We do tours in our Polaris Razors, and it gives an opportunity for folks to come and drive on and follow behind the guide. I met Kent Green at the uh, Rally on the Rocks event. We've kind of been palling around and doing stuff ever since. He knows this place, he's been here forever, so I was able to go places I normally wouldn't go. We're on our way to a local spot called Uranium Arch, but before we get there, let's make a quick pit stop, check out the view. All right, we're gonna walk out here and look at this point. I'm gonna let you go to the edge. Oh, I love the edge, doesn't bother me at all. All right, right out here in Moab, Utah, a little over 5,000 feet above sea level right straight across from us where those red benches are before you hit the LaSalle Mountains are 6,000 feet. This courthouse wash goes down and it hooks right in 
Arches National Park over there. And then that big layer of rock right there is a sandstone, and then you get into the towering rocks. How far across the way? You can see 100 miles in one direction, and that's what we're looking at is over 100 miles. And then right underneath us, got these switchbacks, come right on up, and then right over here to our left is where we hooked into the seven mile rim. We're about a little over 300 feet if we was to take a step right over there. No wonder the old timers liked it out here. It was just a real bugger to get out here with uh, hand carts and wagons. Did you say the word bugger? I did say bugger. <laughs> you know what word I'm thinking of? Lunch. Well, let's do a little more riding first. What we have out here at Moab is trail markers. And a lot of these trail markers are painted white. They look just like you're driving down the highway, only that you're on a rock. As long as you follow those trail markers, you'll stay on the trail, and that is very important out here. Is this part of your lunch tour snack? This is a, a really good place to sit back and have a snack or lunch. Just take a second to see where we're sitting. Not bad, huh? Have a good drink of water, look at the countryside. It's pretty amazing what Mother Nature has done out here for us. Here's some inside info. If you do this seven mile ride with Kent, you'll want to keep lunch short. For one, there's lots to see. But Kent can talk your ear off with all sorts of stories, what I like to call Kentisms. We're going to a place where the men were men and the girls were nervous. Sometimes it rains so hard, it's like a cow peeing on a flat rock. These canyons are so deep, the crows has got to double up the fly out of here. It's a dog gone. You get the feeling Kent can go on all day. Sometimes we get rain out here that's called a toad choker. He can go on forever. Any subject, any subject. Actually, we're glad that he does this because then he comes home and he's a little quiet. <laughs> okay, okay. I think I got my fill of cowboy wisdom for the day. Coming up next, where are these darn arches they're talking about? I can't find one anywhere. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATV, your one-stop shop for parts, apparel, and accessories. And by Central Boiler. We didn't invent fire, just a better way to use it. Welcome back to DP. They say there's 2,000 arches in Arches National Park. But one of the coolest is actually outside the park on Seven Mile Rim. Yes, I can see it. Watch your step. Don't twist your ankles. Sweet. Well, here we are at the famous Uranium Arch. I don't see any uranium. I don't like one of the hidden places out here. A lot of people don't know that this arch is out here. And so I like to take folks in here and, and show it to them. Oh, it's yeah. almost like a double. Yeah, it is almost, but not quite. It's got a nice bridge over on top. Back in the old days, you could drive across that. No kidding. Yeah. If you had enough guts. It's a pretty cool place, you know, especially in the summertime. You want a little bit of shade, great place to eat lunch. You know, you can get in there and get that little breeze going. It just pops out in the middle of the desert out of nowhere. This is what I like right here. You know, things like this that Mother Nature does, and this is all caused from the wind and the rain. So what do you think? Yeah, well, even in the park, you can't get up this close to some of them no. in some places. The arch was cool be able to get right up to it. And then it was cool because it was an arch with like a cave behind it with like a sunroof. I mean, it was, <laughs> who would have thought that? And we're not even done with the ride yet. We saw Determination Towers, and we also saw Monitor and Merrimack. And there are two very famous locations. There's just these big high buttes that just stick out in the middle of nowhere. So Kent, is this where you're gonna get rid of us now? This is where I'm gonna get rid of you. Yeah, that's what I figured. End of the day and you're just gonna like, oh, it's open on the other side. That's right, it's just gonna take you into a deep, dark tunnel. No, what is this? This is called Tester Tunnel. It was uh, a Native American camp, also a uh, cowboy camp. This one actually has an exit? It actually has an exit. It is all natural. And when you walk through there, you're gonna be able to look up and see the sunlight up through some of these cracks way up here. 
field. I'll let you lead. All right, we're headed that way. Now watch your heads, kids. Right here is where it gets a little narrow. Just don't bump your head. See, there is yeah, there is another side. Light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Oh, maybe I was messing with your mind, didn't you? This this is a uh, downright terrible view. Wow, look at that, Jared. Isn't that wild? That means that it's dense, a dense layer of the earth. It's very soft. Even though it's hard to us, from the earth standpoint of it, it's very soft. We call it sugar sand. All right, here we go. Chop, chop, kids. Chop, chop. Tusher Tunnel. Uh, that was cool. You know. Literally, it was cool. It was like 20 degrees cooler than every place else we were. Seriously, that ride we just did is only seven miles long, and you can spend days on it. Everything's so beautiful. I think sometimes people just kind of go off, and they get lost because they're like, oh, that's pretty. Oh, crap, where am I? <laughs> so here in Moab, the term hot tub takes on a whole new meaning. Coming up next, Show you what I'm talking about. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is brought to you by Hatfield McCoy, where the trail riding adventure begins. And by Maui Gym Sunglasses, the fastest growing premium polarized sunglass maker in the world. Today we're going to go out on a trail called Fins and Things, and it's kind of warm up to Hell's Revenge. And that's the beauty about these two trails. They're just minutes apart. Fins and Things, we're going to see Slick Rock. And we're going to go up some small inclines, then we're going to hit a little bit of sand, a little bit of bumpy rock, and then we're going to hit some more Slick Rock. Once you're in Moab, you hear it and see it wherever you go. Slick Rock. Slick Rock. What exactly is Slick Rock? Slick Rock is not slick. Slick Rock. And the reason they call it Slick Rock is because they're cowboys. When they were out here running cows, they had metal horseshoes on, so they would slip. And so they actually pull the shoes off the horses to ride around out here on this Slick Rock. It actually feels like sandpaper. That's why the tires and shoes and things like that work so well out here, even when it's wet. You're in an area that has an abundance of slick rock, and that's what we're famous for. And some of the slick rock that we do go and travel on can be up to 60 degrees on some of the inclines. You do have to have some major grip out here. The traction here is unbelievable. It can get you into trouble. It can push your bounds of what common sense tells you you should and shouldn't do. So after a quick trip through Fens and Things, we hit up Hell's Revenge. Yeah, for a place that's so godly and pretty, there's a lot of hell here too, I guess. H-E double hockey stick. Uh -huh, you know. There's a name called the Devil's Backbone. After that, we're gonna go to a place called the Cheek Squeeze, and then we're gonna move on out overlooking Moab Valley. You do need to know what you're doing. You can get in trouble very quickly. You have a built-in system, and what that system is is if you have that little funny feeling in your stomach that says don't do it, that means don't do it. First time up the devil's backbone, I thought I was gonna die. Really didn't even wanna go through it. But then once you get over that and it, the adrenaline rush, you makes you wanna do it all over again. The very first time I came out here, I felt like I was doing something wrong. Like, you shouldn't be able to be out here, you know? This is, this is too good to be true. One thing you'd never expect to find at Hell's Revenge, dinosaurs. Hey, Jared. You know what you're standing on right now? It's a right footprint of an Allosaurus dinosaur. Get out of here. Weighed about two tons. Dino Kent, can we ride now? I came out here for years in my Jeep, and I knew the lines that I would take because of the wheelbase and the weight of the vehicle and stuff. And a side-by-side, -side, all those trails were new to me again. 
Chris is right. A few years ago, this place was overrun by Jeeps and trucks and Hummers. Now, everywhere you look, you see side-by-sides. It's really changed how Moab is experienced. Some of the trails that, you know, that would get my stomach a bit in my Jeep, uh, in my side-by-side, -side, it doesn't even phase me. If you can make your way through the gauntlet, your reward, the Colorado River. Yeah, we can see the Colorado River, but if you look right along the band down there, and you see that cliff right in front of us, and if you jump up one more level, you see the redder cliffs in the background? Well, that is Park Avenue and Arches National Park where the three Gossman sisters are. Right over here, you see two rocks, the courthouse towers, right in the middle of Arches National Park. So anything across that river right there is Arches. It is nice. It's just such a, an amazing experience to be able to go up these rocks and be able to have such a beautiful outlook on what's all around you. You just can't even take it all in. It's just so beautiful. This is my favorite view right here. I'm ready to go hot tubbing. Are you ready? This is one of the three hot tubs here on Hell's Revenge. They are basically potholes in the slick rock, and it was caused from wind and water back in the day. This one is called the car wash. The larger one's called the Devil's Highway Hot Tub, and the third one is called the Mickey's Hot Tub. We get people from all over the world that comes out on Hell's Revenge just to run the hot tubs. You know, you're like, how did this ever occur? All these big holes in the rock. I guess I'm gonna try the car wash. So that's just a sliver of what Moab has to offer. If you get the chance, go. It's like no other place you've ever been. I've probably been on, you know, 15 trails here. So that's like this much of Moab. There's still so much to experience.